Call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Delore. What is all the agenda for the October 17th regular meeting council to receive discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Delore. Resolve the minutes for the October 3rd, 2017 regular meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, we'll go to your agenda, item 4-1 on your agenda. Council, you have uh, people from Echo Quest, Gavin and Lynn. Joelle. Joelle. Yes. Okay, welcome to our council meeting. I think you were here before and uh, talked to Julie before, so yes. we'll just, I'll just turn it over to you, Gavin, or whoever the spokesperson is. Well, yes, thanks for having us here. Um, we just wanted the opportunity to come and present some of the, some of what we, do as Eco West and where we can serve you guys better. I know we chatted with Julie a bit, and, uh, but I thought Joel can tell you a bit about uh, who Eco West is and then we'll get into some of the opportunities that there may be for you. Well, actually, the reason we're coming, we came to speak to you initially was because of a commitment council made back in 1998 to join the program. We remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to join the Partners for Climate Protection through the FCM. So there was a resolution passed by council in 1998 uh, to follow this five milestone process and we can go into more detail of the process but anyway that's sort of what brought us here is because EcoWest has just recently, EcoWest Canada is a national nonprofit organization but we've just been recently appointed as a Federation of Canadian Municipalities reps for the Prairie Provinces and they gave us a list of municipalities and said hey these municipalities haven't moved in their milestones can you go chat to them and see if they, if they need any help or if they'd like to move through the, the the milestones of the commitment they made back in 1998. Um, so back up a little bit, EcoWest, like I said, is a national nonprofit organization. We are currently working, well, our role really is to work with municipalities, or small rural municipalities, or, or municipalities under 20,000 typically. Uh, we currently work in BC, in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario, but we started most of our work in Manitoba. So in Manitoba, we're working with about 60 municipalities across the province in different regions on different types of environmental, green, innovative um, initiatives or projects. Uh, so that's a little bit what brought us here. Um, and the type of work that we do uh, ranges from just doing, helping municipalities work on different projects in transportation or in energy or in you know waste diversion or or um, <coughs> water that kind of stuff. So we do we touch all sorts of municipal um, fields, and um, that's and, and the the other type of work we do is also we help the municipalities do some environmental planning, what we call a climate change local action plan, and that kind of is the building block for helping um, communities access the different funding through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. So do you want to? Yeah. So Joel mentioned that we work with about 60 municipalities. Of those, probably 45 of them plus, we work on that PCP program that council signed up with 20 years ago. Um, and basically what it is, a five milestone program that does greenhouse gas emission inventory and a local action plan. And so we do that with a bunch of municipalities. We've been doing that for years. And so we could outline a bit of that and see if you're interested in following up on some of that. Uh, but what, basically what happens is uh, we'll work through a five milestone program. So the first step is doing a greenhouse gas emission inventory. It gives the council a baseline of what the emissions in the community and in council operations are. Not just emissions, but <coughs> um, energy consumption as well. So we get a baseline of energy consumption throughout the community, uh, corresponding emissions, and we also do projections to be, to be able to understand um, where the community is going. And also it gives you a baseline to be able to measure results if your goal is to reduce energy consumption or reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So I know that's quite a mouthful. We then work on an action plan together with council to identify areas in the community or council operations where energy can be reduced. And typically, uh, if you're going to be re reducing greenhouse gas emissions, you're going to be reducing energy, you'll generally be saving money. Those steps are the um, basis for some of the future work we could potentially do with council and that is helping council access funding through the FCM. So FCM traditionally we've worked with their Green Municipal Fund, the GMF, they were endowed by the federal government with 550 million dollars a while ago and they investing that in communities in green projects. 
um, across the country. The Prairie provinces have traditionally been undersubscribed to some of these programs, and so that's why they have a Prairie representative now uh, helping communities access that funding. So I think Julie had given you guys some data. There would be um, the funding options would be a sheet that looks similar to that. There's two pages to it. Uh, it outlines the GMF, and then there's also the more, more recent MCRP, or Municipalities for Climate Innovation Program, as well as the uh, Municipal Asset Management Program. So those are two newer programs. They're short-term programs. they uh, five-year programs. They're only going to be taking um, applications for another couple of years. And those, the, the Climate Innovation Program, there's funding, a good chunk of, chunk of funding. <clears throat> the Green Municipal Fund has 50-50 matching funding. The MCRP has 80% uh, funding from the FCM. So it's probably the best kind of money a municipality can get. Those projects, there can be plans, feasibility studies, or capital projects, and they need to be around, have a climate change aspect. So something, whether it's greenhouse gas reduction, um, flood mitigation, retention, water storage, etc., drought mitigation, or adaptation. So there's some really broad <laughs> categories there uh, that communities can look on. Um, there's a lot of details online on the FCM website <laughs> talks about energy saving and retrofitting places. So there's some really good, relatively um, easy money to be had there. And then there's asset management program, which has just been launched uh, for communities. I know the provincial requirements for asset management uh, are attached to the gas tax, so you're going to have to have an asset management plan if you want to get the gas tax funding. Um, down the road, that might maybe attached to the Building Canada Fund, etc. But FCM do have some funding attached if you want to get a program up and running, $50,000 of um, 80% funding from the from the FCM. Um, I know as councils can apply for money for software, staff training, etc. There's also AMM have also received funding for um, to become regional facilitators and that'll be um, if you're not sure where you want to go with your asset management plan, um, AMM uh, we'll be able to guide you along that and all that information will be released at the conference in November. So it's kind of two sides. FCM have funded AMM to facilitate and help municipalities and they're also funding municipalities to get the job done. So the, the PCP program, why it's so important is it becomes one of the building blocks for funding. If you want funding from FCM, it needs to be identified in a community plan. Generally, the, we use the climate change local action plans that we develop with municipalities, but if it is a specific project is identified in a larger community plan, your strategic planning process or development plan or something, um, those can be documents that can be used to help obtain the funding as well. So in a bit of a nutshell that gives you, you know, rush through who we are, the planning process, there's funding. Uh, <coughs> I think, I guess basically we're here to say Council committed to this in 1998. Is there any interest in moving forward? If there is interest in moving forward, we can help you and we can help you access different funding for different projects. That's the nutshell. Yeah. I'm probably the only one still left from 1998. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I don't remember. Yeah, so. Councillor DeLorean, the Did I hear you say that we'd need an, an asset management plan to be able to get that? gas tax funding in the future? From next year, yes. So just to clarify... away with that? That's a whole other conversation. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and so just to clarify, uh, the FCM have some funding for that. The asset management plan that's going to be required provincially, initially, is going to be pretty basic. So, you know, we don't want to oversell that. It's, they're just going to require something basic for council. But as the years go, they're going to increase the requirements for that asset management I know PSAB has, in the counting process, has some tracking of assets. This is going to be more specific. Uh, if you want to get FCM funding, you can do the larger plan software. You know, I don't know all the options out there. The ones I have seen are pretty expensive. Um, Through like Uniware? Or yeah. Uh, there's a couple that I'm aware of, but that's not the requirement for the province there. It's pretty basic, but there's a asset management But it can be covered through the FCM Municipal Asset Management uh, yeah. funding program if you're interested in purchasing that software. And the sa staff training as well. Which is unusual. FCM don't normally <coughs> fund staff training and, and your internal staff, but for this they will. Councillor Jacobs. Well, yeah. Um, am I reading this right with the MCIP that with which you get the 80% funding 
is only the eighty percent funding is only available for for the planning and the study portion. There's no no funding available for any work that might come no. out of those plans. There's the there's plans, studies, and capital projects. So they'll match. They'll put eighty percent up to one hundred seventy five thousand for plans and studies, and they'll do eighty percent up to a million dollars for a capital project. So you mentioned uh, about an analysis or evaluations on greenhouse <coughs> gas emissions. So that would cover our municipality, but you know we have several neighboring municipalities beside us, as you might see when you drove here. Mm -hmm. Would they have to be on board with something like this too to make that evaluation? It depends. If you guys are working on a project, a joint project, it makes sense to be able to get all that data for all the participating uh, municipalities. But if you guys wanted to just do it as a municipality, it, it, there's no harm in, in doing it just within your own boundaries. Um, in, in a greenhouse gas emissions inventory, we, we look at two aspects. We look at the <coughs> corporate, which is the municipal operations. And then we look at the community at large. So we do have a pretty good sense. We'll look at the industrial, commercial, residential, that kind of stuff on the community side. On the municipal operations, you'll look at uh, vehicle fleet, buildings, uh, water, and waste. Yeah. I think about this yeah. one. No, that's right. Oh, street lights. Street, street lights doesn't really count for much here in Manitoba because of the clean hydro. So you know, those are those are basic information that comes through um, through the inventory. So. You can do it within your own municipality. If you're working on a larger joint project, we recommend doing it, um, you know, all the partners yeah. doing their own inventory as well. Council um, Council have you guys ever been involved, or, or would a project like a, a biogeneration project, do we have, have, would that fall under any of these? With waste? With, yeah. You have to have sort of. Yeah. sort of? Well, there's different types of waste to energy systems, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking that's what yeah. you're, you're, you're talking yeah. about a waste energy system. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's different configurations, and there's different. And you know, some, some just take fall. organic. Some yeah. will take everything. Yeah, we have. We we're actually working on a pretty big pilot project right now in the Minidosa Nikola area. Um, they just received. FCM they just received FCM three hundred fifty thousand. So you we'll probably would talk to them and see how that went for them. Well, they, uh, it's through their landfill. They have a nonprofit organization that covers um, six municipalities in that area. It's called Evergreen Environmental Technologies. Um, and they're, they're, we were assisting them with a pilot project for their landfill. So they're just getting the pilot running now? Yeah, they're just getting a pilot running. And it's, it's, called, it's basically a gasification unit. And basically, any kind of waste can go in there, all of it. And what you get out of it after your waste is, is less than 5% because your aluminum. Um, isn't gasified, so you can take that out and recycle it. Your glass isn't ga isn't gasified, and your metals, and then that, and whatever is left is ash. And they said that you can use that ash to build roads or whatever, or you know, top up your your uh, landfill cell or, or whatever it is. There's different uses for that ash. So essentially, it's reducing your waste so yes, significantly. If it has an impact on greenhouse gases, because landfills are some of the worst contributors to greenhouse gases. And so, on a lot of municipalities, diverting that waste or dealing with it differently uh, does qualify. Yes. Councilor Moore, have a question? Okay. Um, I see, like here, knowing like a lot of projects that we have on the go, where in planning stages and stuff like that, we could probably be potentially eligible for a lot of this funding and right. stuff like that. Um, my question <laughs> is, is, you're like willing us to potentially help for the, some of these grants and guidance and stuff like that. Right. Um, what does that come as a cost? Is there a cost for that? Or? So if you were to do just like a one-off application um, for any one of these programs, there's a $5,000 cost uh, for us because we have a technical writer on for staff. For an application. For an application, application. To prepare an application. These applications are quite tedious. I don't know if you've ever seen them, Julie. They're long and they ask for technical questions and you have to put your political spin on it to make sure it fits and all that kind of stuff. So we've done a lot. We have a pretty good success rate. I'd say about 95% success rate with our applications. Just because when we, we start this process, we'll go back and forth with the FCM. We're, since we're their special reps, we have that, those relationships. And before we even start an application, we'll say, hey, does this project fit your criteria? And they'll say yes, or they'll say no, but if you change it this way or if you massage it this way, maybe it will. So we always have that dialogue before we start an application, so that accounts for our high success rate. Um, if you were to s 
sign up for the planning process through us, so that would include a greenhouse gas emissions inventory and a local action plan. We would include one of these applications um, within the cost of this planning process. Now, and our planning process is is based on population. I can't remember. But yeah. So we had quoted for your for your population that the planning process, which includes the inventory and includes the plan, is seventy five hundred dollars, and that would also include an additional application. Um, to to the FCM. The reason programs. we can do that cheaper is because if we do an application, it's a one-off fee. If we do a planning process, we get some matching funding from the FCM to do that planning process with you. So you're getting a bigger bang for your buck um, there. So it depends what you need. Right, and then the other part of it is if you sign up on the planning process with us, we'll walk you through the first three milestones of the five milestones of the PCP program, which you guys. Signed on to. <laughs> right. to further answer the question, there are areas, those are two areas we, uh, we build municipalities for. We can also assist if you have questions, we can answer questions and there's no charge. If you want to write the application yourself, you know, we can at a distance answer some questions for you. Uh, there's areas if you need questions with your, anything to do with waste diversion, so your landfill or something, we'd be happy to answer questions if you have a bioenergy program we could uh, maybe point you in the right direction unless you have a technology already. So there are areas that we, we, we can help with no charge. Uh, specifically, a lot of that is uh, around the waste diversion, whether it's composting or recycling. We have, or a, we have a mandate that. from the province to assist the municipalities with waste diversion, so we were able to come in that way. How about lagoons? Lagoons is another, we work on a lot of lagoons, um, yeah. but unfortunately that has to fall within so, to, un types of you know, to build a cell, no, that would probably be building Canada funding, you know, if you're looking for hard infrastructure, but if there was uh, one of the communities we're working with have put in an engineered or constructed wetland, and that we have worked with them on an application for getting funding from FCM for that. So that is a green solution, and there are other green solutions out there, there's, uh, you know, if you want to run a pilot, if you're running for a lagoon question, if you had issues, feasibility studies, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> You know, feasibility that the study doesn't say <coughs> it's a green solution, but if you're considering green solution, it would qualify fund. for the fund. So I know the Water Services Board has funding, and FCM may have matching funding if you're considering an innovative green technology. Uh, yeah, so it has to be has to fit either in the green municipal fund with innovative green side or climate adaptation side on the other side. And it's it's pretty easy to make these <coughs> types of projects fit under these categories, like. <coughs> I don't know, well, let's say, you know, you deal with flooding, for example, and it washes out your lagoon. Well, okay, you can argue that climate change is going to increase flooding and that's going to impact your lagoon and you need to find a solution for it. For example, you know, like that's just one of many, many, many different ways that we can kind of make yeah. a project. She makes this stuff up you're all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you're massaging your lagoon. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. It's got to fit at the end of the day. They are yeah. pretty strict, but... With the Nepo projects, it took a year to get to the right point, so it was quite a long time. They had a lot of hurdles to jump through, and eventually we got the project to meet their criteria. Um, so that's kind of an example. It took a long time, it was frustrating, but uh, we got the application through eventually. So what, what I'm sensing is that you guys probably know a lot more funding routes that are available to potentially to us than what we come across sometimes. The FCM is the main one we work with, but yes, on the other areas with Building Canada, Water Services Board, they usually work in tandem with what we do. And because we work with so many different municipalities, we also are pretty much aware, well, we don't know what all the options are, but we have a pretty good idea of what options are We've heard there. it before. We've heard times. it before many, many, many times. So we've started kind of investigating technologies. Because when you read a press release, you see this municipality yeah. got funding for this X project, you know, well, where did that fund come from? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, that happens. Just after wish we got that. Million dollars. No, I know. <laughs> the big dollars for generic projects comes from Building Canada generally. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting to see what the province is going to announce with the next round of funding, if they're going to match to whatever extent. Because I know the federal government is wanting to put in 40% and they're trying to push the province to do the same. At this point, the negotiations are that they're willing to let the province be at a third and then the municipalities would be at 27%. But the province really wants. I mean, the federal government really wants the province to be at 40%, 40, 40, 20 for us. So we'll see where that next round of announcements comes out with the current political climate. Right, in the and, and Building Canada Fund covers, you know, like traditional um, um, 
infrastructure, municipal infrastructure. Yeah. So the stuff that we kind of do it can <clears throat> cover the traditional stuff, but you have to kind of take an environmental approach to it for it to be covered. But we spend thousands of dollars on projects that qualify for these smaller funds that we just sometimes don't know are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Exactly. So basically, we're here to help. We'd like to work with you if, you, if there's an interest. Um, okay, culture freezing. Peace Gardens. Yes. What did you tell us about composting them? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about, um, like, they compost out of our land. Yeah. And we were talking about selling it, and okay. you were giving us all the info on what had to be done. So that is a really good question. <clears throat> and I'll give you the slightly longer answer because it's. Uh, generally speaking what happens is a lot of communities have done what you do or they will start composting and they will have uh, piles. Green. Yeah, Green Manitoba actually had an official term for it called BAPs or big ass piles. <laughs> <laughs> they actually did but um, they, what they have done is they've changed some of the legislation to say um, if you have more than 10 cubic meters which is a reasonably small amount you need to either have a permitted site or a licensed site. Both of them require um, a liner or a yeah, kind of like a lagoon where it's even non-permeable that you can do your, your composting on there. It's not going to get into the groundwater or so contaminate anything. So you don't have any leachate or anything like that. And uh, as, well. as we've been exploring it with Green Manitoba being dissolved, we haven't had a lot of direct communication with most of those people have actually moved out, and there's new people there. And I had a discussion with one of the people recently, and they were pretty fuzzy on the direction of where it's going, to put it politely. And so we are actually meeting with the Sustainable Development next week to ask some of the questions because uh, if you go according to legislation, they say you can't have a big pile, you've got to actually have a, a permanent pad that has it all right. Um, and our question to them is going to be, how, are you going to enforce that or how flexible are you going to be? Because I th personally think it's quite unreasonable. It's putting very a, expensive. a $200,000 pad to compost, you want to encourage diversion, like really, that doesn't feel like the way to do it. The only way it would work is if you have regional <coughs> sites where there's several municipalities who are participating in this program. So, so yes. So, so will you know more by convention time? Yes, absolutely. And you will be in Brandon? Yes, I'll be in Brandon. Yes, we'll have Eco West. Uh, we'll have a booth in Brandon and we're also going to have some uh, representatives from the FCM so you know if you're interested in speaking directly to somebody from the FCM but by then we will have spoken to sustainable development and have mm -hmm. more information yeah. on the conference. That was the, that was the question we had down there was this pad that we yeah, and didn't want to have to build. So that is the legislation. I'm hoping they're going to say they're more flexible on it because Danny our director has had some discussion with them and it feels like they may be flexible, but by the end of next week, we'll, well, hopefully have a better idea. Maybe they don't actually, there's a lot of new people in there, and they really don't have a great idea <coughs> of anything that's happening right now, to be quite honest. Thanks. Any other questions? I was trying to remember where your face was familiar from. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a great seminar? It was good, yeah. Sorry. If not, thank you very much for your presentation, and the council is aware of the program. We will discuss it, and uh, Julie will get back to you. Sure, yeah, sure. And if you've got any questions, contact myself or Joelle. That's right. You still have our information. Yeah, you've got our information there. And uh, we'll be at, uh, at the AMM as well, yeah. so you can come and see us there as well. Well, I will Thanks. be. He'll be wearing a different hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's my other life. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Does it, anybody else Thank you. need a card, or does Julie have Derek will have one. Okay. Okay, You've got our details. You can hand us and keep us going. Okay, thank you again. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Good luck and have a good rest of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good nice meeting. Whoa. <laughs> okay. You haven't been yeah. drinking this evening. Huh? You haven't been drinking this evening. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Yep. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Okay, yeah. okay take care. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. See you. Okay, we'll go to item five on your agenda. Thanks for your information. Outdoor Association Banquet. I'm attending, so I'll represent us. Okay, item 6-1 on the agenda, the request from uh, uh, regarding the Mixed Curling Championship. Tell us a discussion on that. Councillor Friesen, you have your hand up? No, I don't. Well, I think they, they came with the, initially with the 
uh, proposal and stuff like that. We told them the deck entertain stops. This is, I guess, their request. Okay. No reaction to the request. There's no resolution on the books. There should be one. Oh, there's a resolution. Yeah. 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 Okay. <coughs> so we have the resolution moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Dory, which all the town provided grant to the mixed curling championship. Uh, host committee in the amount of 1143.45 will offset the cost of the Vestrum's community hall rental during the events. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. I'm surprised. <laughs> Me too. Too quickly. Too quickly. It's signed up. <laughs> no. Okay, we have the superintendent works report. Questions to Derek? Councillor Morio. Um, we still on for tomorrow for Sterling to roll into town? I, I left him messages today. Uh, so that's a no. That's, I, that's an I don't know. <laughs> he hasn't told me any different, but from, I gotta say, I don't know if they're gonna be there. He was to meet with me today and go all through patches and that didn't happen. So yeah, it's not looking good, but I will continue that. Contact. Fair number of public getting concerned, and there's, there's starting to be like traffic hazards and whatnot. So, no other questions, Deloria? Yes. Yeah. Um, kind of concerned over the uh, in, in your report on the Sixth Avenue lift station upgrade with the uh, hydro issue. Why was that not caught in the design? Uh, well, we knew that we were going to be using more demand. We didn't know that Hydro's transformers in the back lane between 5th and 6th couldn't handle it. <clears throat> so how is that our problem? How, why wouldn't the engineers who designed the upgrade, they look into what is actually feeding that? Uh, I, I guess where I'm going with this, I hope there's no cost to us for any redesign. Or anything like that. that sh this should not be on us. No, and I hope we're adamant on that. There won't be a, a redesign for what they're doing now. Uh, if we have to put in new transformers, I don't know what that means. I don't know. Is it? I'm sure Hydro is going to charge for that. Yes. <clears throat> and I, I, I guess in that regard, we probably would have had to if it had been caught early. But I, and I hope this doesn't. I'm scared about the delays now. Is, it, is there any delay going to be, become of this? Well, according to our local office, they believe they can get it done before December. Before December? Yeah. But we, <coughs> we've been working all day on exactly that. Councillor Sackle. I just have a question down on engineering. Met with Colin Peters and Naomi Newfelt regarding the water consumption rates. How did that meeting go? Anything come of it? <coughs> uh, no, it's just a bit of understanding, I guess, on on their part of why we had the rate increase and, and the process of it and what we're doing in the future. Uh, as for their consumption, uh, it was uh, just a misunderstanding on our water bills. The co-op is a compound meter, and our bills only show one meter, so he has a he has a massive bill with very little consumption because we have the small meter on that water bill. We're getting that changed in the next <coughs> few months. So our bills will show both meters so we can see his entire consumption. I know they talked about meeting with council or did you feel like they answered the questions? They still want to come meet with us? Is there more concerns? Uh, I know Naomi was going to take the information that I gave her to the chamber. She didn't have any further questions at the meeting. She was happy with the answers she got. Uh, or at least she accepted the answers she got and understood why we need to do what we need to do. Maybe the process that we did raising 40% maybe we can get in the future. Councilor Delorius. So on the water rates, the consultant that we that is looking at the uh, review where are they at right now they're trying the PUB has a new uh, 
criteria list, I guess, and they're, they're trying to get our rate eligible for that as we speak so that we can fast track this okay. process through the PUB instead I guess, of a, a typical application. <clears throat> but have, do they have, have they, do they have the review done? I guess so we could even see it before we, maybe we, I, I'd like to see the review before we, we even send it to the PUB. It won't be sent to the PUB prior to us looking at it. We haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I guess, do we know when we'll be able to see that? I don't have a date right now. I can I would back to push them on that because when we hired them back in the summertime, it was on a, we wanted this expedited as soon as possible. Yeah. So regardless of what the PUB timeline is, you know, I think we need to see it before we can even evaluate whether we want to continue on down this road. Yeah. You know, if, if their findings are that 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 they're not much different than the previous review, or you know, or maybe there's a whole lot more. I think we'd want to take a look at it before we send it on down the road. So if we can get it as soon as possible. I talked to the project manager this morning, and that was his answer. But I will tell him we need to see something within the next 14 days. And that's well, fair. Or yeah, however long it takes, but we need to see something soon. Yeah. Councilor Morio. Um, I see here uh, you're dealing with uh, Paragon Industries regarding the past due invoice that they're not paying at the landfill. Um, is there a way to go back on the property order of that, or is that two separate entities where we could tie it to service fees or to denial of potential building permits later on down the road? Until this is cleared up, or or is this two separate? Can't hold one responsible for the other one's default. <coughs> I don't know how, if legally, we can do that. I would have to get advice. I don't know if we could see. <laughs> it was their account at our like like the property owner's account? No. Nope. Oh, so it's yeah. So it's two separate entities. Yes. Is is this uh, contractor doing any more delivery? Like we're not taking any more material from him. No. I would hope. Okay. He's not allowed to cross scale. What I need to know: the reason it was not being paid, or at least what they were telling us, is that they haven't been paid yet. So we're trying to get a hold of uh, That's the owners problem. to see if. If they'll tell us that they've been paid, then we will start swinging the bats. Okay, any other questions that are Councillor Freeze. I just noticed you took down the bold banners and flags, so it's Christmas next to go up? Yeah. You know what? Can you wait till after the middle of day? <laughs> it will be a while. I just I commented about that old one that, or that one that was all ripped and I was looking out to see if you'd done anything with it and it was gone. So thanks. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, resolve the superintendent works report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay, Council has a copy of the handy van report for September. Any questions to Julie on the handy van report? If not, we have the motion moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Morial. Resolve the handy ban report for September 2017 being received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> okay, you have uh, the management meeting minutes of October 5th and October 12th. Any questions to Julie or Derek on those? Are we missing a page of the last ones, or did you just use There's I know it's that they were cut off here. You Was there only two people around? It's only you and Ken were the only ones there? Mm. Yes, we're missing a page. Mm. Yeah, there's Darren and Darren's. They sent their emails this morning. So I made the PDF quick, and I did not check the, the upload here. See, I, I uh, grabbed it from the document section as it was, like, yeah. Oh, well then you must have done it after I changed it. Earlier today, yeah. Because the two guys had never sent me their info until today. Today, okay, yeah. So it wasn't even updated. <laughs> it wasn't put on the site. Okay. So there was four people at that meeting, actually. Yeah. 
No questions. Okay, we'll move on to council members and CA reports. Councillor Sackle, the reports. Uh, not too much to report. On October 4th, I attended the meeting at the uh, War Veterans Hall with Travel Manitoba. It was uh, very interesting. Today, I had a chance to do a tour of the uh, Living World Bible uh, Bible College just up the road here, and it's uh, it's amazing what, what, what they're doing there and the amount of students that are coming through there. I think there's 65, <coughs> 65 students there right now. They have big dreams and uh, big aspirations about bringing in a lot more students, possibly in the next few years up to 300 students, which is <coughs> mind-boggling. Uh, I know they run a, a tight ship over there. Everything just, I was just, every time I seen something else, I was totally amazed with everything from their library to their food hall to the properties they own and how they're expanding and making a presence in our community and I think it's something that we have to keep an eye open and, and try to help these people wherever we can because they're, they're bringing in a lot, of, a lot of people into the community probably more than any other operation that we have going on around here right now. Um, other than that, that's all I have to report for now. Thank you. Councilor Friesen. I got an invitation to something called a community conversation. I don't know if anybody else got one of It's to do with the Ag Society and they're wanting to uh, encourage people to come out to a get together on the 26th of October at the Westwood. Um, a lot of people just feel that the rodeo is a good excuse to get out of town. Um, personally, I do not feel that way and I'm hoping that um, maybe somebody We'll have a brainwave and maybe can you give us some ideas how to make this more delightful, more encouraging, more welcoming to the whole community instead of just the <coughs> agricultural sector. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, Kay Markle from Services to Senior, Heather Nielsen from RISE and myself are going to Dauphin to a connecting communities called uh, Healthy Environments, Healthy People. Uh, it's involving the Age Friendly Manitoba Initiative, and we're just going down to see if we can do something with it. Um, <coughs> library meeting last night, it was John Thorpe's first meeting. I don't think he ran away, so I think he's good. Um, about November the 8th, the Legion is doing a poppy slash frat flag day. Um, they're having a <coughs> Fives and sixes. Yeah. I'll go out to the cemetery to the Legion side and place a poppy and a flag on all the members who have died in wars. And <coughs> if you have a family member, if the child has a family member, of course, we're selecting them to do that. So I think it's really great for the kids. Um, and one other thing, have we ever thought about getting a leaf picker-upper for the cemetery to put on the back of the moor? We have nobody to run it. Pardon? We would have nobody to run it. Unless a wreck. <coughs> it just would make the leaves picked up a whole lot quicker. It was one of the staff out there that mentioned it to me and I thought it was a good idea. So. We can talk about it another time. I was having a big win tonight and put my leaves on my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should blow all the leaves out of the cemetery into the river. <laughs> um, I think that's all. Thank you, Councillor Pisa. Councillor Morio. Um, not much this period. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, Council had a meeting earlier this evening uh, to start prepping for our contract negotiations. And secondly, I had a couple uh, individuals uh, come to me, express concern, and I can see where they're coming from because I witnessed it myself uh, regarding uh, particularly uh, school students uh, littering all over when they're walking to and from convenience stores and restaurants back to the schools. Um, they're dropping their wrappers, they're putting down their pop containers on the streets instead of in the garbage cans and stuff like that. So. Um, Definitely on the trails to and from the schools to the different establishments, you can see the trail of garbage. So, um, 
the individual asked if uh, we could nudge our bylaw uh, person to uh, do a little bit more patrols or conversely. It's better to nudge the schools. I, uh, I was just going to say, have us talk to the schools to put out a reminder to the school students and stuff like that that uh, there are garbage cans and stuff like that and to that we do have a littering bylaw and uh, to respect the community. A lot of people do take pride in the community to keep it clean, but uh, exactly. to see people just uh, walk by and throw their garbage in their clean yard or have it blown with days like today, um, I can see how they can get a little riled. So, so, so we need still some sense of pride into the re reminder so that it's it's not a not acceptable just to throw your garbage where you want. Council so. Gloria. Uh, last week we had a uh, Parks and Rec meeting, did some capital planning for the upcoming year as well as uh, worked on, on evaluating uh, fee structure, that type of thing. Uh, and then we also, this week we also had a uh, Water and Sewer Committee meeting to finish discussing the issue that had been referred to our committee uh, by Council, which was the possible to uh, possibly look at changing the point where uh, the sewer service becomes the responsibility of the uh, homeowner versus the responsibility of the town and it's our committee's uh, reviewed it and our feeling is uh, to recommend that it stay the status quo just for the <coughs> fact that uh, the homeowner is the one who has the ability to perform maintenance uh, I uh, augering it out, uh, flushing it, hot water flushes if need be, whereas the town has no such recourse to uh, and, uh, to uh, perform that as well as uh, the town also has no ability to control what goes down the sewer, whereas the, the homeowner is the person who decides ultimately what goes down his sewer, uh, which may uh, end up with plugging it. So those are two very big reasons for keeping it uh, at the point where it joins the sewer main as well as uh, as well as to eliminate any confusion as to possible causes of uh, of, of you know a, a uh, or possible uh, <coughs> disagreements as to where the point of uh, of uh, demarcation would be. So our committee is recommending that we leave the bylaw the way it is, okay. and that is it for me. Thank you, Councillor Jacobson. Right. Uh, well, I attended the same uh, meeting with our recreation department, so I'll just highlight a few other uh, points. We did discuss uh, some of the issues of uh, needle users, if we want to call using uh, needles in the park and leaving them behind in the in the bathrooms there. I felt that that is a, is a big issue, and uh, it's unfortunate we have to rely on our employees to be uh, cleaning this up, even though there are supposed to boxes that these uh, people need to be using. Um, uh, some of those buildings are now locked up, but uh, there have been episodes over the summer that some people even tried to light fires in these buildings and so on. So if this, uh, our committee to discuss, and if this continues on, then we may have to look at maybe perhaps even uh, closing some of them down. Um, we, did have, we did have a lengthy discussion about the dog park, which had come up here, uh, I think brought forward by another member of council. And uh, our committee at this time, after reviewing and looking at um, the, the possibility of it on some municipal properties and so forth, we feel that, that we're not going to move forward with it. Um, we felt that if there are groups interested in, in dog parks in the town of Swanerford, that we would hear from those people as far as recommendations, what they felt that we needed to have. And in the last seven years, for me, I only heard from maybe one person that came uh, to me, not necessarily as a delegation, but a group that was interested in having a dog park. So if those people are out there and they're interested in it, then we want to hear from them. So at this point right now, our committee feels that there's no need to uh, move forward with that. And of course, like uh, Councillor Deloria had mentioned, that we had some uh, rate changes that will be uh, brought forward soon. And uh, I think that's basically it there. And then uh, on the weekend, on the 14th, I had a meeting with District Recreation. Uh, we have uh, basically a strategic planning session in place where we're reevaluating what does this uh, committee have and, and what, what is its purpose as far as 
uh, to recreation and to the, to the valley. So uh, we've had a, a three hour discussion about that <coughs> and we had a, a professional fellow come in from the province. I can't remember his last name, but his first name was Mark Time. And uh, so anyways, he uh, took a bunch of information from us through a SWOT analysis that we had done and, had done, and a few other uh, points that we had brought up. And uh, we'll be meeting again uh, to go through those uh, points, I guess if you want to call, in January to see where this uh, committee or this commission needs to uh, understand what its, its purpose is. Councilor Deloria. I, I thought when we, we went through the restructuring that the purpose of the committee was pretty clear to provide advice to the three councils of the of the uh, valley on all things recreation. I, I mean that they're an advisory body who you know where facilities should go, where where the greatest need is, that type of thing. So I guess I guess I'm just a little bit confused as to the confusion. <laughs> well, I, I I guess there are some members on the committee that feel that. What kind of recommendations can they bring forth, and are they really wasting their breath? Is this just more or less a body that's worrying about grants and, 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 and so forth? Well, I don't think they'd be worrying about grants at all. We have, we have public administration that's well, worried I, about I'm grants. Well, I'm referring to the, the, uh, the, uh, the grant that's received from recreation through the province. So I think that that's more or less what they're, they're looking at. And, what is their purpose as, as far as just that, you know? And, and if they do bring a recommendation, let's say if it's something to do with recreation, then is it going to be just something that's muted or if it's, it's just something that they can actually... Uh, I think we, you, council would have to make the decision on a per-recommendation basis. I mean, not all the recommendations are always followed. I, as Derek, how frustrating they must get yeah. sometimes. Well, absolutely. So. But I guess the, what the community wants to wants to see is, is do they really need to be meeting and, and discussing these things or or what? So there's, there's some pretty that big going issue on. going on right now in the community regarding the splash park. That would be a perfect opportunity to Absolutely. give some rec recommendations on. That was my question was coming up on the splash park, if I may. I'm getting questions in the community quite frequently about our role in the splash park project. Uh, and people are I'm having a difficult time convincing them we have no role at Splash Park. We have a other resolution. Than, other than pass, I've been providing the land at the arena. And right now, as far as our committee with the Recreation Committee goes, not with this Recreation, but with our uh, Recreation Commission, we, we really don't feel like that we have any role as, as far as uh, playing it out other than that, just the land. We've already said that we are not putting any money into capital or we're going to not put any money into the operation of it. And I think that we've been clear about that. I don't know anything yeah, else. We, our our rec committee spoke on that at length and, and uh, we, our, our words have not changed. We can have better effort to get the message out to Well, we're on record tonight, so if anybody uh, sees that, then they will understand that. I must have missed it. I didn't know we had gone back to the Kingsman site. Last time we talked I don't think anybody's made any decisions the, on anything. The, the committee itself, from what I understand, and I haven't been to a, one of their committee meetings lately, <coughs> there is still likely discussion about what they want, and what, they, what are they going to build. They're just in the fundraising modes right now. They, I don't think they really have any of that stuff ironed out at all. So there's no site? No. Not? Necessarily picked or choose. Okay, chosen yet. I don't think there's a site until there's actually a shovel in the ground. I mean, until then, it's all just planning, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, again, stating that our position is that we have part of that, other than we did offer them one location for a site if they chose to build it there. But we're not going to take it over after it's built. We've and we're not supplying water we've offered and two we're not locations. supplying staff. Is that correct? That's it. Okay. Anything else, Councilor no, Jacobs? Thank you. Uh, actually, for me, it's been a quiet weekend. I don't really have very much. So, let's turn it over to Julie. Uh, <coughs> I was away for a few days, so it was quiet for me as well. But um, Lana and I did meet with the ladies, uh, the lady, Legion Auxiliary Ladies uh, group on. October the 11th to discuss um, our agreement with them um, for using the Veterans Community Hall and um, 
and we talked about the dishes that they own and that we rent from them. So it was a very good meeting and we're going to um, come up with a proposal to them and, and actually get all of this agreement, these verbal agreements that have happened over the years, get it all in writing so we all were all on the same page. So they were quite happy about getting that done. Um, so Lana's working on that as we speak, I'm sure. And um, I talked to uh, Kathy from the library today, and she uh, mentioned that uh, her and the board members had a great time at our Christmas party last year because they had asked if they could join us. And so they're asking again if they would be able to join us again this year. And um, I, I said that I would talk to you tonight, but I said that, um, that they would probably be most likely be welcome again. And our Christmas party is um, actually set for December the 1st, uh, which is uh, the Friday again. You'll have to um, look for other entertainment to see that in the paper tonight that the totally. stage players are not Okay, that was my next question. No. I hadn't heard yet. They're not doing a play until no. till spring. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Lana advised that the 8th, Friday the 8th, is also open. So is there any preference to whether First or the eighth? Okay, we'll just keep it at the first then. Okay. And so then I'm looking for uh, entertainment ideas for the convention was well. a word, maybe they have a choir or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know there was concern brought to me by some group or staff uh, regarding the entertainment so I can talk to you offline. Maybe we can take it back in their court and maybe they can help you mm -hmm. oh, okay. find entertainment. Okay. So, yeah. so, things to see when you're going to go. And um, the special services files, so the guys are still working on the on collection one. Um, but I did put um, uh, the, the two other bylaws on all that. So, just make sure you check those out because I do have to do uh, advertising for those. I have to send the advertising to the newspaper next week. Okay. We'll do that. Will be for all three for next week. Well, um, the collection bylaws as it stands right now, we have to do a mailing with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, that the mailing has to go out by the 30th of October for that. But um, the um, publishing will be on October 31st and November 7th. So. I believe it's next week. I'll make sure that I get the, the ads to the newspaper. And um, I guess that's it for me. Okay. I have one question. How how do I um, invite y'all to change the date of a particular council meeting? Is there a way? Which one do you want to change? The 5th of December is a Tuesday night normal council meeting. Okay. I cannot be here. And I just wondered if we could change it to a Monday or a Wednesday or I'll have to miss it. Well, we give you leave to miss it. Would you like Sure. It's our band concert. Thank you. Okay. So you have permission to. I'll just miss it. Okay. 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 okay, we'll go to bylaws and resolutions. Um, we have uh, the bylaw to establish an equitable method of calculating frontage of corridor and regularly shaped lots at the first meeting. Discussion. The committee worked on that and made a recommendation. And the recommendation is in the bylaw change. Yeah, the committee worked on that, and I think. Uh, what was proposed by uh, administration and with some minor tweaking after a meeting, I think we came to a compromise where it was, I guess, somewhere to be equitable and fair. more palatable and fair to uh, people that have weird, irregular shaped lots and corner lots when it comes to the local improvement uh, um, bylaws or projects. So, um, you guys have the bylaw that's in front of you for, for review. Any questions or comments on the bylaw changes? If not, we have the resolution moved by Councillor Laurie, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolve that bylaw 22 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Slot River, to establish an equitable method of calculating frontage of corner and irregular 
Red Guardian Shade Mods be read first time. Discussion? All in favor? All is carried. Okay, the next one uh, council has online a copy of the accounts. We have the motion moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Jacobson. Resolved that accounts is followed with you by approved for payment. General accounts on check 21375 to 21446 for a total of 275305.20. And payroll account from check 4079-4086 for a total of 110411.77. Questions to Julie or Derek on any of the checks? Councilman uh, Sacco. Here, and you have this place to it. Was 001408 to Grazier Manufacturing. That is the pallet storage for the annual storage for the oh, The pallet like racking type thing? Yeah. So that we can get everything that was on the floor off the floor. <coughs> And the other one was 001415. It's for the tire recycling. Oh, money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's loads of tires in there. I should have remembered that one. Okay. Okay, concept great. On the invoice from Grazers, was that part of the capital project? Is that fault that was in the capital budget? Yeah, okay. it's in the grant. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of the resolution? It's carried. Okay, item nine two on your agenda. To local improvement fees policy Any discussion. Yeah. Oh, sorry, <coughs> um, I know we had talked about this some months ago, and it got referred to to yourself, Derek. As far as when we do redo uh, a street, when somebody has frontage and flankage, that you know that flankage would be divided amongst all the benefiting properties. So I mean that's that was the philosophy we were going to take with that, but I don't think we've carried that philosophy over into this policy. But by the way, I read this, we haven't. So you, I remember you asking me one of the list of streets that weren't done properly. Is that what? No, 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 not at all. But uh, I was just thinking for you know when we when we do uh, uh, local improvement, we would we would uh, you know the guy on the corner always gets a, a raw deal. But because he has to pay for his flankage plus his flankage, but that flankage that he's paying the entirety of, I mean, every property on that block benefits from that flankage. That's their flankage too. I mean, that's what gives their lot two dimensions. Yeah. So, if, so the cost of that should be divided amongst all the benefiting properties. Yeah. What we did, we reduced the flankage amount, so because so that they didn't have to eat that. If you look at Schedule A. Yeah. Like the flankage rate per foot is quite a bit less than the, the frontage rate per foot, but we didn't we didn't take anything away and add it. Well, I guess we did because it's in the frontage rate. So that's where it is. the flankage rate, if you have flankage, is considerably less and calculated in like our average uh -huh. estimate that we used for these. But it's not it's not transparent and a few years from now you're still gonna have the same even though the rate is lower, you're still gonna have people come forward with the same argument, which I think is a somewhat valid argument. So I would rather see the the fact that flankage be the flankage of a of a of a benefiting area be divided amongst all the properties of that area. We we had this. It was about three or four months ago. I remember. Yeah. We had a committee. So I, I guess the resolutions come to the table as is, but I won't be able to support it at the at this time because it it definitely doesn't capture the issues that I had with how we did local improvements or how we did even capital projects and, and how we charged out for them. So. So you would want to 
I would want to formulate if there's if there's four lots but on the block and you got your repaving one end of the street and, it, and that's going to cost ten thousand dollars or whatever that gets shared equitably amongst all the benefiting lots so if we just have a flankage rep repair like say we're going through a street and it's everybody pays for their own frontage yeah, but i think someone need if a person has a corner lot they have the 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 benefit of having two open sides versus neighbor on each side and i think in the local uh, the flankage rate they need to have some of the cost of having that benefit and if it was just the flankage repair and you lived in the middle of the block and you got a bill for something that was half a block the water that's feeding your no i agree and, and i mean the asphalt you drive you can't get to your house without but driving on that flankage he'll have that's not that guy's flanket would like, he that's not, not have that the same argument same like he's just he's just going to be just as mad as the guy who's on the corner of, of the i other always side. think he has a lesser argument why why would the entire cost get pinned on that corner he, he may have a lesser argument but he's not going to be less happy you're still going to get the no same. but i mean if you can base your arguments on, on, a, on a principle i mean the, I, I can't find a principle that says that says that guy has to pay for it all that he's on a corner lot yeah that he doesn't get two names a lot of people see it as a disadvantage being on a corner lot busier more traffic that's a principle but then that's the option that they do when they choose to buy it well exactly but and, and that's a choice but but as far as how we're charging for that that's a choice we are making and and we should make our choices based on principles and it to, to that that cause the other lots benefit just as much that their water has to run down a flank road to get onto their street they have to drive their cars on that that there to get onto their street everybody pays for their own frontage i agree yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's no water sewer flankage costs it's just the road and the curb i partially agree with with the councillor delorier uh, but one of the questions i had was if we we're talking about that that flankage we have an intersection okay so let's say there's a square of that intersection who's paying for that intersection the town we take those meters out and we pay for that we're just like in the local improvement on 12. Well, why would we do that even we we shouldn't even do that we should do <coughs> that cost you know if you're doing if you're paving three intersections the area that's under the local improvement divide that those costs equitably amongst all the uh benefiting properties it's no man's land i agree it's no man's land you can't assign it to one property so assign it to them all don't put it on the rate pairs as a whole we can do that like i guess to answer your question on the water and sewer there is no charge for flankage on the water and sewer so there's we're not charging for the water and sewer on the flankage property there's no rate there yeah so there's that's that's a non-issue it's the curb in the gutter and the base work. Any other questions or comments? So we have a resolution moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Jacobson, saw the local improvement fees policy. Is that the right one? I got them. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That Schedule A be adopted as received. Further discussion? Recorded vote, please. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. So we have the uh, council <coughs> received the recreation committee meeting minutes. The motion moved by Councilor Delore, second by Councilor Jacobson, resolved that the recreation committee October 4th, 2017 meeting minutes be received. All in favor? Just no discussion. No okay, discussion. Oh, um, I'm, it's not always that we get committee meetings 
meeting minutes coming to council, but I like this, so that's a good idea that I think all committee meetings minutes should come to council. Absolutely. So that's a good idea. I, this is, I, I'm sure we've seen this a couple times before, but it's not yeah, always. Yeah, we've only done it. We just started doing it, I think, the last meeting. Yeah, this is a good change. This is good. All in favor? Carry. <coughs> Motion moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Sacco. Resolve to read our speech sign reports from March to September. Be received. Discussion? Good comments. Councillor Morgan. Uh, does um, Ken know that that radar sign is half the numbers are dead? Yep. On it and he's in yeah, he's ordering the new blocks. Is it under warranty? Because he just. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Sacco. It's still disheartening to see some of the higher speeds, but overall averages are sitting around 29 or 40, and also the, the average speeds are, are staying down, which is, I think the sign is doing its job when it is operating. I know it gives you awareness. I think it's a great thing still. Council Gloria. Um, speaking of school zone signs, uh, when you're Talking with RCP, are they being sure to uh, since, since schools back in and four school zones, including the nursery school that I feel sometimes might get forgotten way out there? That, that's a 30 kilometer an hour zone as well. I can, I can remind you. Okay. Is the comment they were sitting out in front of my house today? Yeah. And what? The RCP were sitting in front of my house. Did you In fact, he had his arm out the window and there was a kid going by in a car and he was giving him all in favor of the resolution? <coughs> okay, item uh, 9 5 is to approve the recreation facility schedule and statutory and other holidays and openings and closures. Discussion? Motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Order, resolve the recreation facility schedule. Of statutory and other holidays and things and closures for 2018 as per schedule A be approved. Discussion? Councillor Glory. All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Glory, resolve the following receivable invoice be added to taxes, roll 5540. I have bear invoice thirteen four twenty six seventy five dollars. Discussion. All in favor. Carry. The motion moved by Councillor uh, Jacobson, seconded by Councillor Laura, resolved the MCM architecture invoice in the amount of twenty four thousand one hundred fifty dollars, including GST, be approved for and that further be resolved that this cost will be covered by transfer from the General Reserve Fund. Discussion, Councillor Morio and Councillor Deloria. Um, looking at the invoice that has been provided to us and then with the literature we got last meeting, the invoice went up. It was 23615 and I knocked it down to 23000 and they had, we had taxes. Okay. I did not have taxes included. I didn't say that the last week. Any other discussion? Um, does did we get some sort of uh, letter saying that they're not gonna come after us for any more? We're like, not sending out the check until we get it. So uh, we got a, a thing from him saying so this is clear as off. There. So okay, I don't, know if it's I don't want them in that to resolution, but we, you know, that was what was decided. Is we don't send out that check until that's in our hands. So. Okay, as long as it doesn't go out by mistake or something, because. We're trusting you to you sure to get that ones. letter and don't lose that letter. No. All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councilor Jacobson, second by Councilor <coughs> to resolve the Thomas Long River Emergency Plan be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, Councilor Moria. Um, it's right here. If you want to look at it. I haven't it's, seen a chance to review it yet. It's a huge document and um, it's still in uh, the process of being, you know, updated and reviewed and, and sure. stuff. Is, it's a work in progress. It will be for a while, but we have to get it into the uh, the government so that they can review it. We right. have to get it. We have to. I thought that's been done according to Ken's own. Came back from EMO approved. Um, 
we're in 2018, uh, the MO will require all plans to be dis submitted by December 31st. Yeah, he had it in for, for some <coughs> approval, and so the next step was to do a, a resolution. But but there's so um, much document there, we c I couldn't attach it to the agenda. So. And this is basically more of an update on what our current stuff has. Yes. Plans. Yes. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Okay. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, who's all the financial statement for the <coughs> month, ending, month ending August 31st, 2007, <coughs> be adopted as received. <coughs> All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that John Thorpe be appointed as the Thomas Son River representative on the Northwest Regional Library Board. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that pursuant to section 152 3 of the Municipal Act Council go into the committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Carried. Okay. 